100 years ago during World War I in the trenches of the Second Battle of the Aisne, the French grew tired of endless slaughter, terrible conditions that they faced, and their terrible leadership. The soldiers grew sick of watching their brothers in arms die, unnecessary deaths that did nothing for the French in any way than hurt them. The breaking point occurred a day after the Neville Offense began in April 1917. The French army was tired of their living conditions. Food was not sustainable and the water was not clean. The French soldiers were tired of the intent nations, French and England sending them out against the entrenched German machine guns only to have them shot down in their thousands. French soldiers were promised leave but many were not granted for months. So they decided to go on strike. They sat down in the trenches and refused to carry out any suicidal frontal attacks ordered by any of the generals. Robert Neville believed the war was nearly over for the French. One of his first actions as French commander-in-chief was all the attacks on the German lines on Chemdes Dames. German spies discovered the French general's attack plan and prepared for the French. Neville's intelligence reports indicated that the Germans did in fact have his bottle plans. However, undetected, Neville decided to attack anyways. Over a million of the French troops left their trenches and went charging across no man's land. Neville's plan failed. Instead of victory and a massive breakthrough, he watched as his soldiers' lives were taken. Over 30,000 Frenchmen were wounded or killed. For French army soldiers, this was the last straw. For three years, the French troops were faced with mass human wave attacks only to be cut down by Germans' machine guns. On May 9th, 1917, the 21st Division of the French Army was ordered to get back for another attack. Later on, the troops of the 21st Division called a meeting and told their commanders that they were not going to obey their commander's orders. They were tired of being wasted. The mutiny of the 21st Division caused others to join in. The troops of the 18th Regiment ordered to attack from the colonel. The troops simply said they had nothing against the colonel, but they would not obey his orders. Another French unit sent a written message to the commander. You have nothing to fear. We are prepared to man the trenches. We will do our duty and the Bosches will not get through. But we will not take a part in any attacks which result in nothing but useless casualties. As conditions deteriorated, discontent spread throughout the whole army. At least 30,000 men left their trenches or decided to walk home. Only officers were allowed to go home, but for those who were not high-ranked in the army lacked those privileges. Most soldiers have not seen or been home for years or since the war had begun. The men who did not decide to go home still did not obey their commanding general's orders. Soon discipline began to fall apart and panic spreaded. The French high command and the government realized that if the army stopped fighting, the war would be lost and every sacrifice would have been made for nothing. General Patin was selected as new overall commander, and multiple older generals were replaced. Patin started making many decisions, rules, and also took charge of the situation. About 24,000 men were found guilty. 400 were sentenced to death, but only 50 were shot. Any man who was not dead was sent to Devil's Island. It was said that men would now fight and defend their country but would no, not go out of their way to attack. The England and the members of the British Empire would now do the biggest majority of the fighting on the Western Front. Over 500 death penalties were made, but only 50 were carried out. The soldiers' discontent came about by many of the broken promises to the troops. Since 1914, terrible battle management leading to treacherous, frightening losses between the infantry. After accusing his army commanders of mismanagement, Neville was fired. Unfortunately for the Germans, they failed to capitalize on the French mutiny and squandered their only hope of possible breaking Allied lines before the arrival of the American soldiers. After the mutiny, French commanders wondered whether their army could hold out against a determined general fence. Pantin needed to rebuild his shattered forces in order to, for his reforms to take effect. In the short term, the mutiny illustrated that British and newly arrived American forces would have to take a longer share of the fighting. Unlike the generals before him, Panty did not blame the mutinies or problems with the French army outside the troublemakers or on cowardice. 
Pantene realized that many of the complaints that the soldiers had were valid. He created more rest camps and improved the training standards that the soldiers got. He announced a pay raise and ordered that fresh fruits and vegetables be used in field kitchens close to the front lines. The most important improvement was his creation of a new leave system. Under his new plan, each French soldier got 10 days of leave for every four months of fighting. He also made sure that soldiers were cared for during leave. Pantene treated the French army with dignity and respect. The results were nearly instant. While Pantene met most of the provisions that the soldiers who mutinied wanted, he also made sure that they understood that such mutinies must not occur in the future and that some had to pay the price for this mutiny. He instructed his officers not to allow any further disruptions of discipline and allowed them to use any force necessary to stop any future mutiny. Pantene could not have gone further with his punishments of the soldiers who participated in the mutiny, but since many of their reasons were good reasons, and because of how big the mutiny was, the punishment was light. The most important part of Pantene's compromise to his troops was the way in which the future of the way the French army would fight the war. No longer would French soldiers throw away their lives for the vain hopes of struggling commanders. Now, the army would focus on limited and winnable objectives. This change improved the morale of the French army more than any other reform. The French army kept the mutiny under a tight order of secrecy. If the Germans knew that the French soldiers refused to fight, they could have attacked and broke Allied lines. The mutiny showed that the French participants in the war was important and badly needed. Without them, over a million Allied troops would be absent from the front lines, allowing Germany to have a large advantage in men and material. Pétain avoided this disaster by listening to the troops and understanding that sometimes it is necessary to compromise in the order to win the conflict.